While I was away, the BBC decided that it was the perfect opportunity to drop a brand new trailer for the 60th anniversary of Doctor Who. We've got the three specials coming up. We've got The Star Beast, we've got Wild Blue Yonder, and The Giggle, starring David Tennant as the 14th Doctor, and Catherine Tate returning as Donna Noble. I will not play the full trailer, because uh, copyright stuff and the BBC are very claim-happy, as usual. But there's some really cool stuff here. I just want to point out just a few... Um, uh, of the standout moments uh, where you've got the uh, 14th Doctor apparently repelling some shots from uh, the villainous creatures breaking into Sylvia Noble's house where uh, Beep the Meep, played by Miriam Margulies, uh, is currently uh, holding up, is able to use what appears to be some sort of regeneration energy or something equivalent to that uh, to block uh, these. We've also got some really cool shots as well uh, confirming that unit and um, Gemma Redgrave as uh, Kate Lethbridge-Stewart is going to be returning. Uh, these really cool shots, uh, this exterior of the new unit base, with the TARDIS being carried by a helicopter. Uh, the chat's in the way, regardless of if, whether or not it's full screen or, or not. The TARDIS is being carried by helicopter, and the 14th Doctor is being taken to unit headquarters as well. Just some really, really cool shots here. It looks like we're going to be getting some sort of epic city-spanning cataclysmic hellscape event. It is confirmed now in this press release on the BBC Doctor website. Neil Patrick Harris waltzing onto the scene, and it is now revealed that he will play the toy maker, an all-powerful enemy last seen in 1966. This trailer dropped the day after my review of the Celestial Toy Maker 1966 story dropped, and I very cleverly titled it The Doctor's Most Powerful Enemy Yet, because I think that many people predicted that that was who he was going to be playing. It wasn't 100% confirmed, even in the review itself, which um, thankfully did drop a, uh, a day before the official announcement, did allude to whether or not the Toy Maker would be making a return. Where's the stuff? Here we go, yeah, this stuff that we saw on location as well, which looks like Joey the Clown. So yeah, and also we have the uh, Dino Puff 60th Anniversary um, Celestial Toy Maker Part 1 animation as well. Go check out that video. Coincidence? I think not. It was so perfectly timed. Thank you, BBC. I, if it wasn't for me taking the week off to do the Brief Encounters audio, uh, starring Stephen Noonan as the first Doctor, written by John Lucarotti, that timing would not have worked. I, I didn't plan this. This just, it happened to me, and I gratefully appreciate that. Anyway, yeah, just some really cool, epic-looking shots here as well. Uh, worldwide premiere and also some regeneration um, sound effects with Shooter Gatwa here as well who has been invading people's screens this past couple of weeks because of Netflix's Sex Education the last series the fourth series which me and my wife binged and really really enjoyed so that was the trailer confirmation that Gemma Raidgrave is coming back as Kate Lethbridge-Stewart. We know that she's going to be in the next series, but I don't think it was officially confirmed that she was going to be in the specials. That's really cool. Rusty Davis says that this is just the start. As the fever starts to burn, we're heading for a November full of Doctor Who surprises for fans and new viewers alike. Stay alert. We do not currently have the release dates yet, the broadcast dates for these specials. It's basically been assumed that they're going to be broadcasting on consecutive Saturdays in November. The current placeholder dates that fans have come up with are the 4th or the 5th, then the 11th or the 12th or the 18th or the 19th, if they're going for the Saturday or the Sunday. Basically, the first three weekends in November are what fans are, are kind of guessing at, but we don't have official confirmation yet. But there will be plenty, plenty of Doctor Who to watch during the lead-up to those specials, because my god, it was confirmed today a few hours before going on stream, over 800 episodes of Doctor Who programming will be coming to BBC iPlayer. The TARDIS doors are being thrown wide open as BBC iPlayer welcomes the biggest collection of Doctor Who to the platform, with hundreds of episodes becoming available with multiple accessibility features for the first time. Before the anniversary specials hit our screens, viewers will have the opportunity to travel back in time with any of the Doctors through the show's 60-year history with the classic series, as well as explore the vast world of Doctor Who with spin-offs like The Sarah Jane Adventures, Torchwood, and Class, or step behind the scenes with every episode of Doctor Who Confidential, all available in one place, the BBC iPlayer.
As a perfect companion to the back catalogue, the BBC will simultaneously launch an extensive online archive from the show's history at bbc.co.uk forward slash Doctor Who, with everything from interviews with the cast to written documents, long unheard audio, and behind the scenes photos. Together they will tell the story of the groundbreaking series through 60 archive gems for the 60th anniversary. The archive invites fans to delve even deeper into the show with curated journeys such as the genesis of Doctor Who, see what he did there, where audio from former head of drama Sidney Newman alongside documents with his original handwritten notes guide you through the origins of Doctor Who. Episodes from Doctor Who's extensive back catalogue of classic programmes will join the post-2005 revival of the show available for fans to watch on iPlayer for the first time. Right, for context, for those of you outside the UK or for those of you who just really aren't paying attention to Doctor Who online distribution, which is fine, it's a niche, Currently, the BBC iPlayer, which is the B British Broadcasting Corporation's online streaming platform, currently only has the revived series of Doctor Who, and sometimes they put up all the episodes of Torchwood, sometimes they put up all the episodes of the Sarah Jane Adventures. But if you want the classic series, you have to go to BritBox or ITVX, which is ITV's new revamped streaming service, which sort of combines BritBox and ITVX. So you've got basically vintage TV and new ITV dramas in one place. It's a pretty cool streaming service, but it's about to lose a very big asset, and that is classic Doctor Who, which is now coming to the iPlayer, including the TV movie, which has been confirmed will be joining it. BBC have somehow figured out the rights issues and has got the TV movie on iPlayer. I don't know how. BritBox kind of, kind of sweating right now. Yes. Oh my God. BritBox kind of failed in the UK. I don't think it did. I think it, it grew up a, a good enough back catalogue that ITV decided to merge it with itself. It needed a few years to sort of grow and accumulate stuff. Like, you know, you've got all the episodes of the Blackadder. They've got old splitting image. They had the new original splitting image, which was pretty good, actually. And now... It's merged together, and that was a natural extension of the BritBox platform, in my opinion. But anyway, right, so all of the stories from the greatest moments, this includes the first Doctor, William Hartnell's first encounter with the Daleks, first episodes made with colour from the third Doctor, fan favourites from the fourth, including City of Death, Brain of Morbius. This also includes the TV movie with Paul McGann, featuring him taking over from seventh Doctor, Sylvester McCoy. Every episode on iPlayer from the back catalogue will be available with multiple accessibility options, including subtitles, audio description, and sign language, which, believe it or not, was not a given. It's kind of mad that we're going to have over 800 episodes from the Doctor Who universe. It's associated spin-offs and the classics and everything, and it's going to have these accessibility options, including sign language, which is really, really cool. Over 800 episodes of Doctor Who, Russ T. Davis says... I'd like to thank the BBC for all the hard work to get this massive back catalogue under one roof at long last. I'm so excited for new viewers. Imagine being eight years old, spending winter afternoons exploring the 60s, 70s, 80s and beyond, and we're determined this won't be a dusty museum. We have exciting plans to bring the back catalogue to life with much more to reveal. Dan McGolpin, director of iPlayer and Channel, says... Doctor Who has captivated countless millions of viewers on the BBC for 60 years, and in celebration of this special moment, we are bringing classic series to BBC iPlayer for the first time. Fans will be able to enjoy many of the Doctor's earliest adventures, yada yada yada, etc. Note to David Tennant. We want everyone to be able to enjoy this breathtaking back catalogue, etc. etc. Right. The new online archive will launch at bbc.co.uk forward slash Doctor Who, so fans of the show can delve deeper into Doctor Who's history than ever before. All of that signing, subtitling, audio description must have been a colossal undertaking. Absolutely. This cannot have been an easy feat. And that's kind of one reason why I love the BBC conceptually as a public broadcaster. Because there was a few like issues like last year where Channel 4 and ITV, because of the lack of funding, because advertising revenue is not what it used to be, and also the cost of living and things like that, inflation generally, they were falling behind on their obligation as broadcasters, a major broadcaster to do sign language as an accessibility option accessibility option for its programming ofcom actually fined i believe channel 4 because it wasn't it wasn't doing its obligated uh, job as a broadcaster to have those accessibility features and you know it obviously should be a given but because of the resources it needs you know, that's a, that's a difficult undertaking. And plus, 800 episodes, someone actually has to watch and listen to all of those episodes. Do you, do you think it's just one person going through all 800 episodes of the Doctor Who Universe doing sign language? I hope it's just one person. Either way, either way, 
The fact that they were able to do that as a public service broadcaster is one reason why I think the BBC, conceptually, is a really important thing for a culture, for a country to have. In its beginning stages, the new site will feature curated journeys through the archive to bring the show's extensive history to life for fans with items like interviews of cast members, news pieces, audio imagery, and written documents. Over time, more content will be added to the archive, including a special collection of photos that have been scanned at 8K resolution from an estimated total of 25,000 prints, negatives, slides, and digital images, which will give an unprecedented insight into the show with access to all areas throughout the years. The expanded archive will also feature a additional gems from over 100,000 documents including memos, correspondence, designs and audience research along with orchestral scores of sheet music. Also being added as a selection of audio clips about Doctor Who including radio programs, documentaries, interviews and more. Right, there is absolutely no way a single announcement blog on the Doctor Who news website is going to be able to encompass or give all of the details as to what exactly is going to be dropping over the coming weeks and months onto the iPlayer. But either way, this is colossal news. If you folks have only recently gotten into Doctor Who, or only recently become a fan and have dived into things like TARDIS Wiki, or the iPlayer, or BritBox, or whatever, or the collection box sets, you folks are so lucky. But then again, I was super duper lucky getting into the show in 2005, compared to people who got into the show in the 80s or the 90s, or even before that, because I had the internet and a terrific BBC curated Doctor Who website with classic clips from the old BBC media player, is how I watched clips from the classic series for the first time. The classic Doctor Who website, even though it no longer exists, it's still been archived and it's a resource that i always use when doing classic series reviews it's just that good and the current doctor who website kind of pales in comparison to that but with this now you know you're able to go on the iplayer and watch all of classic doctor who whereas back in 2005 to entertain was sort of drip feeding all of the classic series stories and they were costing 15 20 pounds for a dvd whereas now you've got the collection sets for 40 or 50 pounds which are full of incredible bonus features and come in stunning artwork not saying that the two entertained DVDs weren't also great releases in their own right, but it just kind of shows that as time progresses, it's easier and easier now to access the history of the show. It's absolutely terrific now, and if you are only just getting into the show now for the 60th anniversary, or if you are one of the millions, I am sure, across this weird blue globe of ours that are going to get into Doctor Who next year because it's that cool guy from Sex Education in the show, you are going to have absolutely no problem, you know, getting into the back canon, getting into the back catalogue of Doctor Who. The only real hindrance here is going to be, where do you start? Which is where I hope people like me and other fans as well are going to be welcoming and are going to be able to point people into the right direction. Let's see how they respond to Series 14, to Shooty Gatwa, see what they like, and then say, okay... If you want more of that, this is where you go. And I hope that you folks are going to be on your best behavior when that happens. Now, this is obviously insane, awesome news to be dropping all of this stuff over the coming weeks. However, there's more. Right, so firstly... This is perfect timing for the back catalogue because we've got the Doctor Donathon. Join Doctor Who fans across the world in watching the adventures of the Doctor and Donna together, plus an exciting competition for fans in the UK. Alonzi, ahead of the biggest reunion in time and space, let's rewatch their adventures again. A watch along of Doctor Who adventures featuring the 10th Doctor and Donna Noble will be happening on Saturday, the 4th of November, starting at 9:45 a.m. UK time. Fans around the world will be able to watch the watch along. Uh, will be able to follow the watch along. Sorry, with the hashtag tag dr donathan so basically on the bbc iplayer or your own blu-ray releases whatever you want to do you're able to watch the runaway bride then go to partners in crime up until journey's end maybe the end of time because that does have wealth and that does feature appearances we'll see what the schedule has there apparently they will have a planned out schedule with breaks there's also a competition where it, it closes tomorrow at midnight, so you folks better get on that. I've not done it because there's no way that I can justify a trip to London and possible hotel cost to spend 14 hours in a, in the Genesis cinema watching all of uh, Plan um, uh, Runaway Bride and then Series 4 of Doctor Who. But 14-hour um, live stream? 14-hour live stream. Could I do it? I'm guessing this means now, though, that 
the Star Beast is not going to be broadcasting on Saturday the 4th of November because that 14 hour time window would overlap with a Saturday evening broadcast. Maybe the 5th, maybe it will be on Sunday. Either way, so that's going to be happening. Do I do a 14 hour live stream? Do I join in with this? Possibly. I don't know. Questions for later. But there's more coming to BBC3 Doctor Who Unleashed. This was rumored several months ago. It turns out the rumor was 100% on the money. Time to step behind the scenes. Doctor Who Unleashed lands on BBC3 and iPlayer this November. Just as you come out from behind the sofa, it is time to step behind the scenes. A brand new Access All Areas show, Doctor Who Unleashed, will give viewers an unmissable insight into the world of Doctor Who. Unleashed is a new 30-minute factual entertainment series produced by Bright Branch for BBC Studios, for BBC3 and BBC iPlayer. Host Stefan Powell, BBC gaming correspondent and former Radio 1 Newsbeat presenter has been given the keys to the TARDIS, and after every episode of Doctor Who, viewers can switch over to BBC3 or the iPlayer as Stefan takes viewers on a journey showing them just how the uh, just how this out-of-this-world drama is made. With exclusive interviews with the stars in front of the camera as well as those behind it, Unleashed is the ultimate companion to Doctor Who. There's the logo there. Showrunner Rusty Davis says... Over the years, I meet so many people who were inspired to find careers in TV because of the behind-the-scenes material the BBC would show, and now it's back, in the grand old tradition of Doc 2 Confidential, but in a brand new form, Unleashed, so a whole new generation, and faithful fans of old, can see what these stars and crew get up to behind the cameras. Stefan Powell says, When you're told Rusty Davis is asking you to present for a show, you say, when does he want me? Doesn't matter, I'll be there. There's a really fun and fascinating group of people bringing Doctor Who to life. I can't wait for the audience to meet them. I'm so chuffed to have been trusted to, he uh, to help tell, in all its glory, the story of what goes into making the magic happen. So, yada yada yada. This is going to be dropping in November. There's going to be three 30-minute episodes to correspond with the 360th anniversary specials, and I'm presuming that with um, the Christmas special in Series 14 and beyond, Doctor Who Unleashed is just going to be standard for the next few years. Now, Doctor Who Confidential is also one of the things that's going to be returning to iPlayer, whether or not it is the confidential cutdowns that you'll find on the DVD and Blu-rays, or the original fully licensed music 30-minute versions, which are very entertaining. That remains to be seen. But either way, Doctor Who Unleashed... I am so happy that this is happening. And it's also basically now a given, I'm assuming, that these will be on the home media releases as well. When the steelbooks or the box sets for the anniversary specials and also series 14 and beyond drop, Doctor Who Unleashed will probably have its own dedicated disc or will be on those discs as well, which is really, really cool. Full disclosure, I have worked with Stefan Powell before. Several years ago, when I was working on the BBC uh, Big Weekend in Swansea, I was driving Stefan Powell around. He invited me in after I dropped him off at his dad's house and we had a cup of tea. Lovely guy. This hosting gig genuinely could not have happened to a nicer person and I'm very, very happy for Stefan. As someone who works in the TV and film industry and can directly attribute that career to Doctor Who Confidential, I'm not the first fan to complain about the lack of behind the scenes, extensive behind the scenes features over the past few years for Doctor Who. And a big part of that is because of BBC uh, budget cuts. It is a, uh, a, you know, it's because of, um, uh, it's because of streamlining, trying to make the most of the license fee, etc, etc. Uh, and that's been a bit of a shame because I think that Genuinely, there's an entirely brand new generation of people who grew up watching Doctor Who when it came back in 2005 who are now working in the media industry and can now attribute that to Confidential. I know that it's not just me. Um, my Doctor Who origin story is that I did not get into the show on the day Rose broadcast. I got into the show the week after when the End of the World broadcast. I didn't watch Rose. My family recorded it on VHS and we watched it before the End of the World. By the time Mickey got eaten by the bin, I was absolutely hooked. And then when um, the credits rolled on the End of the World, the announcer said, hey, go on to, on to BBC Three to figure out how the episode was made. Then I went on to BBC Three and realized, oh, this is a job. You can do this for a living. And that's what started my obsession with Doctor Who and also wanting to work in the TV and film industry. When I met Christopher Eccleston several years ago and I told him I got into the show thanks to him and also like, Doctor Who and uh, how appreciative I was of that. And he shook my hand. He said, welcome to telly is a wonderful moment of my life. And, you know, 
it was because of him and Doctor Who Confidential that I got into it. And I'm so glad that the next generation are able to have that asset, have Unleashed. And I kind of wish they kept the Confidential branding, but who knows? I hope it lives up to what Confidential did in the past. I hope there are also, much like the 2005 version, plenty of clips and interviews of people who worked on the classic series. I remember uh, Confidential was one of my gateways into the classic series. Those interviews with classic doctors. I love Sylvester McCoy and Colin Baker and Peter Davison during the Confidential episode for Dalek, talking about uh, their Dalek stories, and it made me want to watch all of those ones. That I, I think that Unleashed can do that. And the fact that it's going to be on iPlayer as well as BBC3, which is kind of desperate for content right now, BBC3. Basically, RuPaul's Drag Race is the only thing keeping BBC3 going. I think that's really, really cool. And like I said, Stefan Powell is one hell of a get lovely guy also welsh talent you even if you've never heard of his name you will almost have definitely have heard his voice on the radio former um bbc radio one newsbeat presenter hope there are bloopers there better be bloopers so yeah i'm looking forward to that hugely 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 also we've got a lot of cool stuff to look forward to next week now last weekend there was the BBC Radio 2 60th anniversary musical celebration. Oh, actually, no, sorry, it wasn't last weekend. It was uh, like a, it was, oh, blind me, it was like two weeks ago. Thursday, the 20th of September, in the Millennium Centre in Cardiff, there was a two and a half hour concert from the BBC National Orchestra of Wales and BBC Singers, which had a bunch of music from the 60 year history of Doctor Who, both past, present, and also future. It apparently had the brand new version of the theme tune and even ruby sunday's new theme as well which was jazz inspired and this is going to be dropping this weekend october 15th at 8 p.m on bbc radio 2 so next live stream next monday we're going to have a lot more doctor who news to talk about as we're going to be going over the concert and also the brand new theme it just doesn't stop and also guess who was at the concert the three chads chris chibnall rusty davis and stephen moffat now, my long-standing rumour was that Chris Chibnall and Rusty Davis were the exact same person because they'd never been seen in the same room together. Either this is a very convincing Photoshop or they are actually different people. I'm clinging on to hope for the first one. But anyway, obviously there's so much stuff happening over the next few weeks and months for Doctor Who's 60th anniversary. But there's one narrative in the fandom that I've really got to push back against. This idea that the 60th anniversary, 2023 in general, has been a really quiet year so far for Doctor Who. And honestly, if you are just a casual fan or somebody who only dips in and out of Doctor Who, I can understand that perception. However, if you're someone like me who makes a point to try and follow it on a weekly basis... There has been so much Doctor Who stuff this year that it's genuinely been hard for even me as a full-time job as Doctor Who blogger to try and document and cover it all. Genuinely, it has been insane. Obviously, we've got Doctor Who uh, audio dramas on Big Finish. You know, you've got the Once and Future story, which is culminating uh, later on this month with all their Torchwood stories as well. Uh, the Dark Genesis of Terror, which uh, was a bit of a controversial release, but Rani takes on the world, Fifth Doctor Adventures, Robots, uh, more Torchwood. Torchwood. You know, basically, this is just some of the stuff from earlier in the year, but the releases have not stopped. Basically, Big Finish have been going off this year, and it's been absolutely insane. However, there has been so much other stuff this year. People are saying, oh, now it's only just starting to ramp up. I think you've just not been paying attention. Firstly, we do have these documentaries. We'll cover these in a minute. But did you know that BBC Audio have been releasing consistently more Doctor Who audio adventures this year that I've just not covered because they don't promote them. The Ice Kings, a 12th Doctor one. The Teeth of Ice, an 8th Doctor one. Beast of Scar Hill, a 9th Doctor one. And the Lagoon Monsters, a 10th Doctor and Martha one. We've also got um, that 10th uh, Doctor and Martha comic book coming out in a few weeks' time. Also, we've got the Puffin Classics crossovers, which have still been releasing. Josephine and the Argonauts and Rebellion on Treasure Island. Jason and the Argonauts and Treasure Island story with the 3rd Doctor and the 11th Doctor, respectively. These came out this year. We had Doomsday, of course, which has been consistently releasing books. There was even the, the Lost in Time game, which is consistently getting new 
new characters and updates week to week that um, Doomsday concluded this week, but we'll talk about that one later. Uh, we've, we'll talk about Four to Doomsday later as well. We'll review that. Doctor Who Redacted Series 2 came out a couple of weeks ago. I still have not listened to that. And the fans have been going off as well. The History Between Us zine, which is a fan publication, which is going to be chronicling different adventures between the Doctor and the Master. I pre-ordered my copy uh, earlier this afternoon. I'm really looking forward to getting some of the art prints that come with it. It's a 350-page illustrated fandom-built universe-spanning adventure book. We also have... The Underwater Menace is getting animated as well as, as part of the Second Doctor animated range as well. We had Season 20, the collection set. We've got the Tom Baker vinyl as well. People who have been saying that this has been a really slow year and it's only just now ramping up, it's kind of insane. Plus five new Target books. Stuart Beck is absolutely right. That also includes uh, the ones that are coming out for the 60th anniversary specials. It's, it's kind of mad how much stuff that we have been getting from both the fandom side like I said, I showcased some of the books in my Hooverville uh, video from a few weeks back. And also, like, just BBC Books are consistently releasing new stuff as well. The Daily Doctor, 365 and a quarter Universal Meditations on Life and How to Live It. It's, there has genuinely been so much stuff coming to fans this year. And I don't think that we understand how good we've got it this year. Not to mention that... I'm still forgetting stuff. Flippant's absolutely right. The gorgeous Magic the Gathering cards, the Magic the Gathering and Doctor Who crossover, they got in touch with me a few weeks ago. Hopefully we're going to be organizing something. Very exciting. Really, really looking forward to that. But yeah, I, fans have been popping off as well. Spectral Horizons are doing a 60th anniversary, like choose your own adventure type audio thing, which I recorded my lines for the other day. That's very, very exciting. And also some more Pierce de Resistance stuff, because apparently the BBC didn't think we had enough sodding material to work with. Doctor Who documentary with new interviews to air on radio and BBC Sounds. Doctor Who fans can look forward to new interviews from Rusty Davis, Stephen Moffat and Chris Chibnall. Fans of Doctor Who are in for another treat this week, as if we didn't have any more. As the talked about two-part radio drama has now been confirmed, details are more exciting than we could have thought. BBC Sounds will launch the first part of the documentary on Friday the 21st of October and according to the synopsis Who Are We? Doctor Who the classic years will take a trip through both times the Doctor Who universe and the second universe to find out the changing attitudes of Britain how the changing attitudes of Britain have been reflected through the TARDIS it's a tale that features Dalek Mania Dad's Army Mary Whitehouse Ridley Scott the Cybermen Hans Zimmer the Beatles and the JFK assassination of the Doctor and his companions are thrown into a world of sexism racial tensions and the rise of fan fiction but that's not all there is to look forward to. Oh no, there's a slate of archive interviews with the likes of past doctors, Peter Capaldi, Patrick Troughton, and David Tennant to get excited about, as well as brand new interviews with showrunners Rusty Davis, Steve Moffat, and Chris Chibnall. Essentially, the two-part documentary will see host Joe Wiley take a trip through the Hooniverse, with the second and final parts of the documentary exploring how Doctor Who has become one of the greatest on-screen institutions. The second part will include tales from some of the team involved, including the three showrunners as well as doctors and their companions over the years. Expect to hear from the likes of Matt Smith, David Tennant, Jodie Whittaker, Christopher Eccleston, Peter Capaldi, as well as Sophie Aldred, Bonnie Langford, Shooty Gatwa, Sylvester McCoy, Matt Lucas, John Sim, Billy Piper, and Kylie Minogue talk about a great lineup. The documentary will also air later this month on BBC Radio 2. There is so much going on as fans, and I think that fandom generally has kind of been sleeping on Doctor Who so far. Obviously, it has only been using half of its power level right now. <laughs> like Freezer in Dragon Ball Z is, is fighting without using either of its hands. But don't sleep on some of the stuff that has come out earlier on this year, folks. Because we have been spoiled as fans. And that also, don't forget the rumours of a colorization of Doctor Who. I, I actually think that that could be one of the things that Rusty Davis was alluding to in that first story. About how they're going to be adding uh, and making the back catalogue of Doctor Who more alive than ever before. We're still, we still have that rumoured, but not confirmed, colorization of classic Doctor Who. I reckon an, un an unearthly child is getting colorized. I've not heard any official source, but I reckon that that is part of the BBC iPlayer rollout. I'm willing to put money on it. Honestly, the only way that this year for Doctor Who fans could get any better is if they simultaneously announced Doctor Who the 60th anniversary after party live with Harry Styles having a video call in live and Class Series 2. And I say that without a hint of irony.